Lying down meditation. Lying down is a wonderful way to meditate if you can manage not to fall asleep. And if you do fall asleep, your sleep may be more restful if you enter it through meditation. You can wake up from sleeping in the same way, bringing full awareness to those first moments of wakefulness returning. When your body is lying down, you can really let the whole of it go much more easily than you can in any other posture. Your body can sink into the bed, mat, floor, or ground until your muscles stop making the slightest effort to hold you together. This is a profound letting go at the level of your muscles and the motor neurons which govern them. The mind quickly follows if you give it permission to stay open and wakeful. Using the body as a whole as the object of your attention in lying down meditation is a blessing. You can feel the body from head to toe, breathing and radiating warmth over the entire envelope of your skin. It's the whole body that breathes, the whole body that's alive. In bringing mindfulness to the body as a whole, you can reclaim your entire body as the locus of your being and your vitality and remind yourself that you, whoever you are, are not just a resident of your head. You can focus on different areas in either a free-flowing or a more systematic way when practicing meditation lying down. We introduce the people in our clinic to lying down meditation in the form of a 45-minute body scan. Not everybody can sit for 45 minutes right away, but anybody can do the body scan. All you need to do is lie here and feel different regions of your body and then let go of them. The body scan is systematic in the sense that we move through the various regions of the body in a particular order. But there's no one way to do it. It could be done scanning from head to feet or from feet to head or from side to side for that matter. One way to practice is to inwardly direct your breath into and out from the various regions of your body as if you could breathe right into your toes or your knee or your ear and breathe out from those places. When you feel ready, on an out-breath you just let go of that region, allowing or inviting it to dissolve in your mind's eye as the muscles themselves let go and you drop into stillness and open awareness before moving on and connecting with the next region of the body, which you would come to on another in-breath. As much as possible, allow all the breathing to be through your nose. You don't have to do lying down meditation as systematically as in the body scan, however. You can also focus on particular regions of your body at will or as they become dominant in the field of your awareness, perhaps due to pain or a problem with a particular region. Entering into them with openness and attention and acceptance can be profoundly healing, especially if you practice regularly. It feels like a deep nourishing of cells and tissues as well as of psyche and spirit, whole body and soul. Lying down meditation is a good way to get in touch with your emotional body too. We possess a metaphorical, a mythical heart as well as a physical one. When we focus on the region of the heart, it can be helpful to tune into any sensations of constriction in the chest, tightness or heaviness, and be aware of emotions such as grief, sadness, loneliness, despair, unworthiness, or anger, which may lie just beneath the surface of those physical sensations. We speak of broken hearts, of being hard-hearted or heavy-hearted, because the heart is known in our culture as the seat of our emotional life. The heart is also the seat of love, joy, and compassion, and such emotions are equally deserving of attention and of honoring as you discover them. A number of specialized meditative practices, such as loving-kindness meditation, are specifically oriented towards cultivating in oneself particular feeling states that expand and open the metaphorical heart. Acceptance, forgiveness, loving-kindness, generosity, and trust are all strengthened by intentionally centering and sustaining attention in the heart region and invoking such feelings as part of formal meditation practice. 
but these feelings are also strengthened through simply recognizing them when they arise spontaneously in your meditation practice and by encountering them with awareness. Other body regions, too, have metaphorical meaning and can be approached in meditations, lying down and otherwise, with this kind of awareness. The solar plexus has a sun-like radiant quality and can help us to contact feelings of centeredness, lying as it does at the center of gravity of the body and of vitality in terms of its digestive fires. The throat vocalizes our emotions and can be either constricted or open. Feelings can get stuck in the throat, sometimes, even if the heart is open. When we develop mindfulness of the throat region, it can put us more in touch with our speech and its tonal qualities, such as explosiveness, speed, harshness, volume, automaticity on the one hand, or softness, gentleness, sensitivity on the other as well as its content. Each region of the physical body has its counterpart in an emotional body or map which carries a deeper meaning for us, often completely below our level of awareness. In order to continue growing, we need to continuously activate, listen to, and learn from our emotional body. Lying down meditations can help a lot with this, as long as when you get up, you're willing to risk the stands that your insights might require. In the old days, our cultures, mythologies, and rituals helped in the process of activating our emotional body and honoring its vitality and its impermanence. Usually this was done in same-sex initiation practices organized by the community of elders whose job it was to educate the adolescents about what it meant to be a full adult within the tribe or culture. The importance of the development of the emotional body is hardly recognized today. We are pretty much left to our own devices to come to full adulthood, whether man or woman. Our elders may have become so denatured themselves from a lack of such nurturance that there's no longer a collective knowledge of how to guide the awakening emotional vitality and authenticity of our young people, our children mindfulness may contribute to a reawakening of this ancient wisdom in ourselves and in others. Since we lie down for so much of our lives, lying down meditation provides a readily accessible gateway to another dimension of consciousness. Before sleep, upon waking, while resting or lounging, the lying down can itself invite you to practice mindfulness, bringing breath and body together moment by moment filling your body with awareness and acceptance, listening, listening, hearing, hearing, growing, growing, letting go, letting be. Try tuning into your breath when you find yourself lying down. Feel it moving in your entire body. Dwell with the breath in various regions of your body, such as the feet, the legs, the pelvis and genitals, the belly, the chest, the back, the shoulders, the arms, the throat and the neck, the head, the face, the top of your head. Listen carefully. Allow yourself to feel whatever is present. Watch the sensations in the body flux and change. Watch your feelings about them flux and change. Try meditating on purpose lying down, not just around bedtime. Do it out of bed, on the floor, at different times of the day. Do it in fields and meadows on occasion, under trees, in the rain, in the snow. Bring particular attention to your body as you're going to sleep and as you're waking up. Even for a few minutes, stretch yourself outright on your back if possible and just feel the body as a whole breathing. Give special attention to any regions that are problematic for you and work at letting the breath invite them back into a sense of membership and wholeness with the rest of your body. Keep your emotional body in mind. Honor gut feelings. Getting your body down on the floor at least once a day. There's a particular feeling of time stopping when you get your body down on the floor 
whether it's to practice a lying down meditation such as the body scan, or to systematically work the body gently but firmly towards its limits in first this direction and then that, as we do in mindful hatha yoga. Just being low down in a room tends to clear the mind. Maybe it's because being on the floor is so foreign to us that it breaks up our habitual neurological patterning and invites us to enter into this moment through a sudden opening in what we might call the body door. In Hatha Yoga practice, the idea is to be fully in your body as you bring awareness to the various sensations, thoughts, and feelings which come up while you're moving, stretching, breathing, holding postures, reaching or lifting with arms, legs, and torso. There are said to be over 80,000 basic yoga postures. One won't quickly run out of new challenges for the body, but I find I keep coming back to a core routine of maybe 20 or so postures, which over the years just keep taking me deeper into my body and deeper into stillness. Yoga folds movement and stillness into one another. It's a wonderfully nourishing practice. As in the other forms of mindfulness practice, you're not trying to get anywhere, but you are purposefully moving right up to the very limits of your body in this moment. You are exploring a terrain where there may be considerable intensity of sensation associated with stretching or lifting or maintaining your balance in unusual spatial configurations of limbs, head, and trunk. There you dwell, usually for longer than part of your mind would like, just breathing, just feeling your body. You're not looking to break through to anything. You're not competing with anybody else's body or even aiming to improve your own. You're not judging how your body's doing. You're simply residing in stillness within the full range of your experiences, including any intensity or discomfort which should in any case be benign if you've not forced yourself to go beyond your limits, tasting the bloom of these moments in your body. All the same, for the devoted practitioner, it's hard not to notice that the body loves a steady diet of this and changes on its own. There is frequently an on-the-way-to quality to this practice, at the same time that there is the just-as-it-is-now feeling as the body sinks more and more deeply into a stretch or into letting go, lying on the floor between more effortful postures. Not forcing anything, we just do our best to line up with the warp and woof of body and mind, floor and world, staying in touch. Try getting down on the floor once a day and stretching your body mindfully, if only for three or four minutes, staying in touch with your breathing and with what your body is telling you. Remind yourself that this is your body today. Check to see if you're in touch with it. Some pitfalls along the path. If you follow the lifelong path of mindfulness practice, the biggest potential obstacle at points along your journey will undoubtedly be your thinking mind. For instance, you might come to think from time to time that you're getting somewhere, especially if you have some satisfying moments that transcend what you have experienced before. Then you might go around thinking, maybe even saying, that you've gotten somewhere, that the meditation practice works, in quotes. The ego wants to lay claim and take credit for this special feeling or understanding, whatever it is. As soon as this happens, you are no longer into meditation, but into advertising. It's easy to get caught up here using meditation practice to support the self-inflation habit. As soon as you're caught, you cease seeing clearly. Even a clear insight, once it is claimed by this kind of self-serving thinking, rapidly clouds over and loses its authenticity. So you have to remind yourself that all colorations of I, me, and mine are just currents of thinking that are liable to carry you away from your own heart and the purity of direct experience. This reminder keeps the practice alive for us at the very moments we may need it the most and are the most ready to betray it. It keeps us looking deeply in the spirit of inquiry and genuine curiosity and asking constantly, what is this? What is this? 
Or perhaps on occasion, you may find yourself thinking that you're getting nowhere with your meditation practice. Nothing that you want to happen has happened. There's a sense of staleness, of boredom. Here again, it's the thinking that's the problem. There's nothing wrong with feelings of boredom or staleness, nor of not getting anywhere, just as there's nothing wrong with feeling that you are getting somewhere, and in fact, your practice may well be showing signs of becoming deeper and more robust. The pitfall is when you inflate such experiences or thoughts and you start believing in them as special. It's when you get attached to your experience that the practice arrests and your development along with it.